morning. Seems so different being up here. <laughs> Seems different just being in church, so I haven't been for a while, but I am back. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, any issues from the congregation? Any things that you want to bring forward? Any announcements, concerns that you have at this time? We have a later we can go to announcements too. Yes. Sure. I don't hear so well, so you better grab the mic. There's one there on the piano too, but. Sure, we're doing announcements now. I have one. Sunday school starting back up shortly-ish. Um, the first day will be September 8th. As always, I am looking for teacher volunteers. So um, parents, grandparents, mark that in your calendars, please. It'll be running usual time, 9.15 to 10.15. So any questions or families that um, have concerns or anything, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. You are the treasured people of the Lord, a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by, the, by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Um, we have a gathering song, and I guess I got ahead of myself here, didn't I? Um, number 719, God is here.
guess you just go into the scripture song. <laughs> Is that song all right? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's first lesson is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shelah, bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of God. Please stand for the psalm. We will be reading it um, together. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you to all who call, call upon you faithfully. Well, here ends the psalm. You may be seated. Um, our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, According to the wish riches of his glory, he may grant to you that you may be strengthened in your inner faith with the power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through spirit faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. 
I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and height and depth and know the love of Christ that suppresses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever, amen. Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now, the Passover. The festival of the Jews was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragrance left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. And we have a video, is that right? Why worry about the loaves and fishes, Mary Oliver once wrote. Why worry about the loaves and fishes? If you say the right words, the wine expands. If you say them with love and the felt ferocity of that love 
and the felt necessity of that love, the fish explode into many. Imagine him speaking. And don't worry about what is reality, or what is plain, or what is mysterious. If you were there, it was all those things. If you can imagine it, it is all those things. Eat, drink, be happy, accept the miracle. Accept to each spoken word, spoken with love. I really like that poem by Mary Oliver. As with a lot of poems, I don't feel confident that I know what it means, but that seems to be part of the point. I'm reminded of advice Billy Collins has given about poetry, that we hold a poem up to the light like a color slide, or press our ear against its hive, or drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out, or water ski across a poem's surface, waving at its author's name on the shore. That may be apt advice for miracle stories, too. Mary Oliver's poem helps me to hold Christ's miracle up to the light like a color slide. You can marvel at the jewel tones of it. You can wonder how love shone through something small to create something big. When Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were pondering how to tell the story of Jesus, they had to weigh, as all poets and storytellers must weigh, what to include and what to leave out. I'm sure none of the gospel writers shared everything he had heard and remembered about Jesus. About one story they were in agreement, today's story, where Jesus feeds a multitude in the desert. It's actually the only miracle story that all four gospel writers tell, which must have been, which means it must have been a very important story in the early church. One reason it was important is that it was the kind of story that made you think about other stories. Like when you're at a special dinner with your family, say Thanksgiving dinner, and somebody rubs their belly and says, these sweet potatoes remind me of the kind grandma used to make. And someone else says, remember that time she forgot they were in the oven and the marshmallows on top were completely burnt? And someone else chimes in, she always used twice the amount of marshmallows the recipe called for, said she wanted them to be extra sweet because we were extra sweet. When the early Christians heard the story about Jesus, feeding the multitudes, they would feel a wash of love amidst memories like that. Someone would say, this reminds me about God, how God freed the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt, parted the waters, led them into the wild, and they were hungry, so hungry in the wilderness, but God gave them food, enough for everyone, for every day, manna, they called it, manna from heaven, and somebody else would say, remember Elisha too? That time a man brought some loaves and ears of grain to the prophet, and Elisha told the man to give the food to the crowd. And the man said, how can so little food feed so many people? But Elisha promised there would be leftovers, and there were. A hush might settle after that story then someone would speak into the silence. When Jesus was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ's miracle about the loaves and the fishes, when you press your ear against its hive, you hear it buzzing with the whole history of the people of God and especially with reminders of God, who is not only moved to meet human needs, but also able to meet human needs. Through the ages, these stories have reminded God's people that when God promises God's creatures life in all its fullness, we have good reasons to take God seriously. Why wonder about the loaves and the fishes 
If you say the right words, the wine expands. If you say them with love and the felt ferocity of that love and the felt necessity of that love, the fish explode into many. At least they did when Jesus said them. This story reminds us that Jesus was powerful and his miracles reflect God's intent and ability to feed hungry people. But that's not all this story reveals. It also reminds us that Jesus did not act alone. Jesus did not gather the loaves, multiply the loaves, and distribute the food to all those people by himself. He asked his disciples to bring what they could find. He took what the disciples found and brought to him, and Jesus blessed and broke and gave it back to them. Christ's disciples gave the food to the crowds, enough to satisfy everyone and even more. Perhaps Jesus could have done all of that by himself, but that isn't what he wanted. Jesus chose to perform this miracle with his disciples' help. The story reveals something crucial about discipleship, that it requires Christ's followers to get out there, to be involved in the work Christ is doing, to encounter people who hunger for understanding, for meaning, for justice, for food. Christ's disciples are challenged to reach out to the hungry and also to trust that when we reach out, we will have something to give. One of my colleagues in the Presbyterian Church, a pastor named Felipe Martinez, has this annoying and inspiring habit. Whenever we reach a crossroads in our work and we aren't sure whether we have what it takes to try the new thing we think God may want us to try, if he senses undue anxiety, Felipe will say, I believe in a God of abundance. I feel chagrined almost every time because I realize that I've been operating from a mindset of scarcity. Do I believe in a God of abundance? What might that God be hoping I'll do? Nadia Boltz Weber wrote a beautiful sermon about this story of the loaves and fishes, where she shared how necessary it has been to her personally to accept, first of all, that God can perform miracles. Because there are plenty of ways to explain what happened in the wilderness, as rather ordinary. Like one person shared and then more people felt compelled to share and before long it was one big wilderness potluck. But Nadia said she has come to value the fact that God is different from us, that we have a God who can actually feed so many with so little, a God who created the universe out of nothing, who can put flesh on dry bones and life in a dry womb a God who looks upon things we dismiss as nothing or insignificant or insufficient and says, ha, now that I can do something with. It's important to remember our God is such a God. Also, says Nadia, it's important to remember that as God calls us to the work of discipleship and as we feel ourselves overwhelmed by the hunger of the multitudes, and by how little we seem to have at our disposal to help, how little compassion or skill or will, God looks upon us with unfailing grace and love. We need to remember, she says, that when Jesus looks out and asks, where are these hungry people going to get food? He is including us in the category of hungry people and himself in the category of bread. When I rely only on my strengths, Nadia says, when I think I have only my small, stingy little heart from which to draw love for the people around me, when the waters are rough and the storms are real and I'm scared, filled with fear of what is happening or not happening in my life, my home, my work, when I'm filled with fear that I don't have what it takes to live as God wants me to live, then I've forgotten about Jesus, my Jesus, who is making something out of my nothing and walking toward me in the storm. That's our guy, the man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, 
friend of scoundrels and thieves, forgiver of his own executioners, resurrected on the third day, the great defeater of death and griller of fish and savior of sinners. Jesus feeds us so we can feed others. I want to come back briefly to one of the parables from last Sunday, the one where Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. That parable comes back to me this Sunday as I think about the miraculous rightness, all the light and love and justice and goodness of God's kingdom that God has hidden in creation, even in our small, stingy little hearts and in our homes and workplaces and suburbs and city streets. Robert Farrar Capon wrote about this, asking first, do you know how much a bushel is? I had to look it up. It's about eight dry gallons, some 128 cups of flour. After you had mixed in all the water you'd need, you would have more than 100 pounds of dough. Now, Capon sees this as a metaphor for creation. It's into all the created world that God's kingdom of heaven is hidden. Like yeast, a woman has worked all the way through. From the start, Capon suggests, God's power and purposes have been kneaded into creation like yeast, hidden in flour, becoming dough. And we are essential to the growth of the kingdom. We are essential to the way God's purposes play out. Because how does yeast lighten dough, Capon asks? by filling the dough with thousands of tiny pockets of carbon dioxide. And how do those pockets of gas cause bread to rise? By expanding when heated. Warm carbon dioxide. That may remind you of something. It may remind you of breath. It reminds me of breath entering and leaving human lungs, our breath even. And perhaps thinking about breath, in the company of other Christians on a Sunday morning, will remind you of Christ's breath and how the risen Christ breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And if you're steeped in the stories of scripture, that story about Jesus might remind you of other stories, like the Valley of the Dry Bones and God saying, I'm about to put breath in you and you will live again and know that I'm the Lord. You might also be reminded of the spirit God sent over the deep sea, God's spirit brooding over the waters of creation in the beginning of the world. These are stories to assure us that God is here, powerfully breathing God's spirit, powerfully providing for God's people. Why? So we can courageously live in service to one another as a way of serving Christ. I believe in a God of abundance, says my friend Felipe. Accept the miracle, says Mary Oliver. Don't be afraid, says Jesus Christ. That's our guy, says Nadia Boltzweber. And if Christ is our guy, if God is our God, let us be bold to imagine what we are empowered to do.
In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. We're going to share the peace. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there. <laughs> it worked. Uh, it worked. It worked. Morning, Mike. Robert. Morning. Peace with you, Ray. Peace with you, Gary. Peace. Barb. Peace. Good to see you. Yeah. How are you doing? Peace with you. A couple of announcements. First, a thank you to Dean for filling in for us today. He definitely has a talent that I know I don't have, and I'm sure quite a few of you wouldn't feel comfortable being up here either. So thank you, Dean. And then after service today, we're having a little work day taking down ceiling tiles. But before we get to that, we need to get all the furniture moved out of the meeting room. So if anybody can stay and help take stuff off the walls, even move chairs out. We're going to put them into the center aisle here for now, and then we're going to spread down tarps, and anyone who stays to work does get a sandwich and chips and a salad, so feel free to stay. Or if you want to run home and change clothes and come back and help, that would be great too. I'm guessing we'll be here for a few hours. Um, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I would, yeah.
Let us pray. God, our creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As God's people called in love to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. One, in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can, we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space and fill it with the power of the Spirit for loving service. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation, protect harvests, and give every person food in due season. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God, beyond borders, you rule all in all. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way and bring an end to war and conflict. In your mercy, Amen. prayer. God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We rem remember any who are sick or suffering, all those who we in our own way, in our own hearts, bring to you now. Families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near. In your mercy, God of grace, you root us and ground us in love. As you inspired our ancestors in this place in their ministry, sustain, sustain us also in new endeavors that your glory may be made known and your loving kindness shared anew. In your mercy, God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices with theirs and all the saints in singing your praises in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now then join in the prayer that God gave us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.